All right, let's move on to applied French for threes. This is where we're taking the distinctive resolution of an augmented six, and we're no longer going to scale degree five. We're not wedging out flat six five and sharp four to five. We're going to pick a new octave and land on it by that same half step voice leading that wedging out procedure. Here's an example of it again from the from our textbook. Again, I've supplied some Roman numerals just to give you the, the broader context. And that will allow you hopefully just focus in on this very end. Now notice that in, in, in this example, we are ending on B minor. That's our, that's our tonic. So I'll put one there. Notice that this is bass clef and this is bass clef. So that's B, D, F sharp, our tonic. Okay. Now, see if we can fill some of these blanks. Uh, maybe it's easiest if I just move back one. Here is this uh, C in the bass moving down to B. Notice it is C natural, so that is a half step resolution right there. And here is a half step resolution right there. We have the same wedging out procedure going on, but now it's not serving as a predominant going to the dominant, we're, we're going to tonic. So it's, it's got a dominant function actually. It's got a leading tone. We've moved this, this wedge procedure from its normal place down to scale degree one. And we're wedging into it by half step. Okay, now how do we determine what kind of augmented six chord it is? We're going to have to look at the at the intervals above the bass is, is the easiest way to do this. You can't look for those old scale degrees because you're in a new environment. So, um, do you have a fifth above the bass? Actually, at first you do, don't you? C to G, there it is, and it's doubled up above, so there's another G up there. But then it changes, and the fifth above the bass becomes a fourth above the bass. So that those stems help. They show you where that voice is going. You have to be very particular. If you have a fifth above the bass, it's a German 6-5. You can check it, see if you've got the third above the bass. C, E, yeah, there it is, there's an E. You need a fifth above the bass, we already found that, and then the sixth is this thing that eventually resolves it that way. But when you shift in that one line, from G to F sharp, you've created a fourth above the bass, and that creates a French 4-3. I've left off one very important symbol. If I just wrote that, I would think that they're built on flat 6 in the bass, but this is not flat 6 in the bass, and so we need to show that these are applied. Now you can use the arrow notation like this and say that those are applied to the 1, or you can say German 6-5, and say it's of one. You're not going to this normal place, the dominant. You're applying it to a new scale degree, which is scale degree one. And the same thing with this one, French 4-3 of one. It's, it's nice to have an example here of going to one, so that you have the slash one. You would never see that with a secondary dominant, right? I mean, you don't do five of one. If it's five of one, then it's the five, and you never end up having to write slash one. And that helps to make the point that this is a this is not a dominant chord going to something other than tonic. This is a predominant chord that no longer goes to five. We move it somewhere and can move it to one instead. So you don't think in the key of this does not mean think in the key of one. This means make one your goal. Apply this voice leading, this wedging out by half step to an octave that consists of scale degree one. Different, different use of that. You have to get used to this adjustment. You're no longer thinking in the key of the next thing. You're thinking of taking the voice leading and applying it to a new place in the scale.